I just wanted that to be on record. That information uh, was meant to be to you, but will also affect the entire membership of okay. this house in the Dutch Relegate. Okay? Proceed. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. What I want to confirm is that it is the highest level, Mr. Speaker. Maybe the, the Commissioner, Senator Okongo Mugeni, Senior Counsel, Mr. Speaker, uh, should be informed, and I hope they will not allow that to happen because we, we will resist any such move. Mr. Speaker, secondly, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm informed that uh, the American Ambassador, uh, Megan Whitman, has resigned. I want to pass our deepest appreciation for our tour of duty in the country and for being supportive to government, Mr. Speaker. You remember under our tenure, the Kenyan government was able to work closely with the Haiti government to bring peace and security. So, Speaker, and also he, he, he organized, uh, Madam, Mr. Speaker, uh, Ambassador Megan Whitman, the U.S. State uh, Senator visit. Senator Sergei, yes. I want you to confine your contributions to what yesterday you were reminded yes. by uh, the Honorable Senator Boni about the relevance of your comments to yes. the motion at hand. But you, know, Mr. but you know, Mr. Speaker, U.S. is one of the biggest donors to elections in this country. She was very instrumental. She was among the people who are in bombers with as, you. As I'm you, surprised you should as, be appreciated. As you do that, yes. let it be I'm tying up because, Mr. Speaker, this particular bill. Yes, I'm tying up with what is happening, the NADCO, the genesis of NADCO. You know, the embassies and the government, U.S. is one of the heaviest funders, not only to peace and security, but to elections in this country. And she was very supportive, and we wish her well in a tour of duty. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, you have to appreciate the cost of election is very expensive. Last year, and that is, has been my argument, Mr. Speaker, the last election of 2022, Kenya spent a whooping 35.8 billion Kenya shillings. That translates to 2,000 shillings, Mr. Speaker, per voter, which is very expensive across the world. 2,000 per voter, which is too high, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, we must agree that the election business in Kenya should not be live and dead. You are in the U.S. You saw people voting by mail. You saw people accepting results graciously. And I'm happy in the U.S., Mr. Speaker, and I, I, I heard my brother, Senator, talking about Biden inviting Donald Trump to the White House. Was it today? Or in the, is here today? And therefore, we want peaceful transition where people go into an election, contest, you lose fairly, you accept. I think what is happening, Mr. Speaker, and you have noted in some of your comments, that there is deficit of trust among African countries and more so Kenyans. We don't trust each other. I think the only time Kenyans will trust each other about elections is when Jesus Christ is the returning officer. Because the fact we are becoming too prescriptive on election laws in this country. We are becoming too, too subjective to the election laws in this country. We are prescribing even how a returning officer should sign the declaration form at the uh, polling station, at the county tallying center, at the national tallying center, Mr. Speaker. We are aware of how we don't have trust. It happened in 2007, 2008, Mr. Speaker. The tampering of elections, the problem in this country is lack of deficit to the institutions we have. People don't even trust parliament. They don't trust judiciary. They don't trust the executive, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, it behooves to us that the institutions that the Constitution have built, we should trust, Mr. Speaker. And that is why the cost of election is very high in this country. Even as we talk, Mr. Speaker, as of today, the pending bill that IBC has that has not paid their people, the, 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 the Mantatus, the people that provided service and goods, stands at whooping over 2.05 billion Kenya shillings, Mr. Speaker. While I agree, Mr. Speaker, with the number of, I think this proposal is just a cleanup of the Elections Act, because having served as the chair of JLAG in the last session, Mr. Speaker, we did a number of amendments, elections, push and pull, between the National Assembly and the, and the Senate. Mr. Speaker, outside the basic laws on basic issues Kenyans affect, the highest legislated matter in this house and in this country is the issue of elections. We go to an election, we notice a problem, we come back and legislate. The other day we didn't trust the ICT, the IT to use of technology elections, now we want to trust it. The other time we were told uh, there was Jose Carmago somewhere. The other time we were being told there's satellites 
servers are in, uh, in, in France, and you remember the famous word, Fungua Sava, Mr. Speaker. Others were saying it is in the U.S. There is time difference, Mr. Speaker. And I think it is important that we need to agree. I'm happy in one of the Section 2 of the Elections Act, we have amended to include ID as identification to, as Kenyan passport, which is good, and registration of candidate. I think those are clear. Now, Mr. Speaker, on clause number 3, 3A, uh, is suspended. I agree that during by election or during referendum, we, we, somebody who is not a, a voter or who has not registered that time during referendum and by election, the registration and opening and inspection of voters register should be suspended until the by election and referendum is done. And Mr. Speaker, I agree. I think in uh, Mutula Kilonso's case, when he passed on, uh, the victim of such was the sister to the current governor of Makweni since she was not registered as a voter. So we, it is now better that if a by-election is happening in Viga or in Banisa, for example, if I come from Banisa but I vote in Nairobi, the law should not allow me to participate in election of Banisa. And I agree with this provision. So that we don't have ambulance chasers for elect parliamentary seat. You remember the famous political ambulance chaser is one by Ferdinand Waititu, where he was contesting in Mbakasi, when unfortunately the former MP uh, was killed that used to come from Kiambu, who used to work as a unionist, he left here and went and contested. When it came an opportunity of becoming the governor of Kiambu, he left here and went to contest. So this provision will cut lane. In fact, in fact Governor Sonko was also trying to be an expert, where he was now, after failing to run here, he wanted to run in Mombasa. Yet I am sure that he was a voter in this city. So we need to, to ensure that. Even people like Senator Kalwale would want to run for governor. We don't want somebody who is running in Nairobi as an MP decides to wake up one day and run for governor in, in, in Kakameka. Yet those people don't know who you are. So let us bring sanity and uh, hygiene in our politics, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of Section 6, elections uh, before the date of election, I agree uh, within 60 days is sufficient to rectify your particulars as a voter and also to give you a chance, even in by-election, uh, like now what is happening in Banisa, there is a ward in, uh, in Kakamega uh, that has had similar challenges after the MCA was killed. Uh, the issue of referendum, I agree that that 60 days is sufficient period to rectify your uh, particulars as a voter in that region, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the fourth point that I wanted to make is in Section 27. Uh, Mr. Speaker, within a coalition political party, uh, for example, as I remember, Mr. Speaker, uh, in, before we went to elections of 2022, some of us who served in the 10th session, we were being pushed. I remember Otsosi was in that, in the National Assembly, the lower house. Mr. Speaker, we were being pushed to amend, to create what we call coalition political party. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the proponents then were in power, and they came up with something called Azimio coalition. And I'm happy when it came to the new session, the definition of coalition party became a challenge, and uh, we are now where we are in the beginning, because now with the broad base, those things are no longer relevant. Mr. Speaker, and I think when a coalition agreement should be submitted, a copy, to register our political parties. Mr. Speaker, are you aware, in the last session, it is only Kenya Kwanza coalition agreement that was given to register our political parties, that was made public. No one made public the Azimio coalition agreement up to today, unless there is contrary information outside there. So we want everybody to be equal before the law, Mr. Speaker. No, you know, Mr. Speaker, Senator Otsosi was, uh, as, uh, was in the lower house. He could not be, have been aware of what was happening. Senator Mr. Speaker, now he's Senator in the upper house. He can know what is happening. I'm just informing. Senator Otsosi, you know how to catch the eye of the yes, Speaker. Mr. Senator Cheragai, proceed. As a deputy party leader of ODM and a senior member of broad-based government, he should hold these horses, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, what we are advising is to clean up, Mr. Speaker, and ensure, Mr. Speaker, that uh, it is delivered. Mr. Speaker, Senator Otsosi would have allowed me to quickly finish all that when he's contributing and can make his comments. Mr. Speaker, in Section 34, I agree. Mr. Speaker, can you believe you get an MCA in Wajir? But he was nominated from, from Nairobi. He doesn't know even where Wajir County is or County Assembly. You get in Kericho, in Vihiga. These political slay queens and slay kings must be stopped, Mr. Speaker. 
I agree. We cannot let us nominate women, people living with disabilities, that come from that word, from Kisumu, Mr. Speaker. From Mawendo Papa who did, let that be registered there, Mr. Speaker. We don't want people who smile before the political party leaders and they are being vetted in hotel rooms to have opportunity, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. 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 Speaker, we are aware of political party leaders who vet people in the hotel rooms and going Senator to Sandorini, Mr. Speaker, Senator, Speaker to get the opportunity to be nominated, Mr. Order. Speaker. Senator Osoti, what's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, is it right for my friend uh, Senator Jeregei to claim that it is bad for people to smile before party leaders? Does he imply that uh, we are su people are supposed to cry before the party leaders? Senator Jeregei, that particular point of order insinuating uh, on the no. part of the leaders of political parties is not the proper language to utilize in okay. the house. Mr. Speaker, you let me rephrase. Let me rephrase, Mr. Speaker, that some people, some individuals, it is good to smile to political party leaders. It is good to get hungry at them. But I'm saying some political party leaders, and you know the guilty are always afraid, Mr. Speaker. The Bible says what? Some political parties, some political party leaders are known to vet the nominees. Mr. Speaker, in hotel rooms and in Santorini, Mr. Speaker. We are aware, uh, Mr. Speaker. What's your point of order, Mr. Senator? I'm saying some, Mr. Speaker. Senator I'm using Trigger, the word some. Seat. Take your seat. There's a point of order from Senator uh, just, just before that statement, is it right for the senior ranking member, the Senator of Nandi, to insinuate that it is only women and pe uh, people living with uh, disability that can be nominated? As it is today, the current CS of finance has been a nominee from the National Assembly, and that was a man. So it is not only women that are nominated. Even in this house, we have uh, Senator Shimera, we have Senator Mbogo, and they are not women. And Honorable Speaker, some of us, like me, is nominated. You cannot say I got my nomination through a smile. I'm beyond a smile, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> uh, Senator Chirage, uh, the chair directs that you confine your contributions, check your language, and withdraw the statement that make reference Mr. to Speaker, members I, I, Mr. Speaker, having been vetted in hotel rooms. That is not Mr. parliamentary. Speaker, I've said some and confine your contributions to proper language. Senator Chirage, Mr. that is the directions from the chair. I'm warning you so that you do what is right as a ranking member of this house. Okay, Mr. Speaker, can I rephrase? I've said some political party leaders. I didn't say all, Mr. Speaker. And number two, I've said, we, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have been in politics long enough to know some of these things, Mr. Speaker. I might be young, but I know so many things that many people don't know. And Mr. Speaker, I want to rectify, anybody can be nominated by political parties to serve as senators, members of parliament, and I agree with the information by my sister, Senator Ogola. If you know you are nominated by merit, why worry? Mr. Speaker, I'm saying, I'm calling out political party leaders who are political briefcase parties, that when they get chance to nominate, they go for other conditions, which my learned uh, senior and law lecturer he smiles and knows because I've shared with him, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Mr. Speaker, because my time Senator, is spent. Honorable members, order. My, allow my allow time Senator Chirage to conclude. Uh, let me conclude. M Mr. I have abandoned a long time ago my, my sister. The, com the, com the commission shall appoint a place on the issue of presentation declaration of results, Mr. Speaker. I agree the chairman. The chairman of IEBC should have opportunity to declare the president elect, Mr. Speaker. Order, because, Senator Mr. Sotsi, Speaker, we don't to want to go, Mr. Order. Speaker, where the Cherera 4 tried to do. I agree that the person who should declare the president elect and deputy president elect should be the chairman of IEBC. We don't want to go to Cherera 4 debacle, which almost brought this country to, 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 uh, to uh, instability, Mr. Speaker. So I agree with your wisdom that you did bring that at least, Mr. Speaker, the IBC chairperson should declare the president-elect and deputy president-elect. On the issue of electronically transmitting results, we are in the era of technology. Two hours is enough. 
Let us know, Mr. Speaker, if we are not careful with the current Gen Z with technology, we can always know who is winning or who is not winning. So I agree on the issue of electronic uh, publishing of results. We are tired, you know, CROs and county can be hijacked as they come through uh, Kericho somewhere in Awasi and they can disappear with the results, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of auditing, uh, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of auditing, I agree after one year we should audit. I agree that your committee, JLAC, should give us what was the outcome of presidential and national elections within one year. That should be sufficient to give us audit, Mr. Speaker. This is a very good uh, legislation. One thing I'm happy, Mr. Speaker, you remember in conclusion, there are a number of MCAs who have been complaining that they were not given chance, Mr. Speaker. We need to rectify on the, the issues that are within elections. Let this country have trust in our institutions, Mr. Speaker. I agree, Mr. Speaker, with, with your senior colleague who said that even nomination should be done by ABC, Mr. Speaker. Some of the people, some of good leaders have been lost. Can I get 30 seconds, Mr. Speaker? Some of the people have lost their seats because of bungled nominations, Mr. Speaker. Many people have seen nominations will tell you it's not an easy process. And where you come from sometimes... Uh, I now call upon Senator Sotsi to continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to also make my contribution on this uh, very important bill, the Election Amendments Bill 2024, that is a product of the NADICO process. Uh, and I'm happy that uh, this House has already dispensed with the uh, Political Parties Act that is now supposed to go to committee of the whole house and now we are handling the election amendments uh, uh, bill. Mr. Speaker, I want to support the provisions in this uh, bill, although a few others uh, I have reservations. And let me start by uh, looking at clause three, which talks about uh, the people who register as voters during the by-election process should ideally not be eligible to contest uh, election in that electoral area. You remember we had uh, the long-drawn case of uh, Kate Kilonzo, um, uh, which uh, many people are questioning why uh, she was not able to, to contest. But I think it's important that during that period, uh, people who are keen to be uh, candidates should be stopped. Uh, because why at the last minute, Mr. Speaker? So I think that's a very progressive uh, amendment, and I support it. Mr. Speaker, I also want to uh, support uh, Honorable Cheregei statement that election in this country is uh, very expensive. We conduct a very, very expensive uh, election process. And I think uh, the issue of uh, cost of conducting an election in this country must be looked at so that we don't make election very expensive uh, and uh, therefore uh, make other very important uh, uh, national uh, programs derail because of election. Mr. Speaker, let me also comment on uh, 